And now we're joined by U.S. Report regular former White House Chief of Staff and Senior Advisor Bondi Partners, Mick Mulvaney. Mick, thanks for coming on the show. And I want to ask you about something I talked about at the top of the show. And that's basically that Republicans should not get complacent. There were a bunch of special elections or by-elections, as we call them, uh, in the U.S. over the past week. And an important one was in New York, where uh, Democrat candidate Tom Suozzi won a special election to replace George Santos. Now, Democrats also did well in Pennsylvania, and they did well in Oklahoma. Mick, I'm a little concerned here because I remember the red wave back in 2022 that never happened. Is there a danger that if Joe Biden is sort of on the nose here with voters for all of his cognitive problems, the Democrat brand may still be compelling? What, uh, what is your analysis of this? Yeah, James, it's always good to, hear, uh, to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, this was a big deal. It was a loss for the Republicans. This was a seat they used to hold with George Santos. Of course, uh, the margins are so tight in the House of Representatives right now, they can't afford to lose any seats. So this is a big loss for them. It's especially important because of the way that Tom Suozzi won this race. He ran on closing the southern border. That's a Democrat running against immigration. That's very, very difficult to do in this country. But if the Democrats figure out a way to take an issue that's on the front of everybody's minds right now and make it their issue, that's a game changer here. Ordinarily, 99 times out of 100, immigration, when that's an issue, plays to the Republican strength. But in this particular circumstance, Tom Suozzi ran ads that were described as more Trump than Trump. If the Democrats start changing their messaging on the southern border, they could have a very successful November of 2024. So yes, everyone's watching this result very closely. Yeah, and in fact, I think Tom Suozzi even used the I word invasion at one point. And when you tie this into how uh, the Democrats sort of successfully portrayed the Republicans being obstructionist on what I thought was a very bad border bill, tactically, um, are the Republicans in danger here of getting outplayed on this issue? You know, in danger, yes. It's a cer certainly a long way until November, and they have a lot of opportunities. We are leading in what's called the generic ballot. I say we, the Republicans. That's when you just ask people, are you tending to vote? Do you expect to vote Republican or a Democrat? They're up by 10 or 12 points on that nationwide, which is really, really good for Republicans. Put that in, in sort of uh, in context. In 2010, during the massive Tea Party wave, that generic ballot was about 8% pro-Republican. So there's some good numbers for Republicans but they are losing these special elections. Special elections are always outliers. They always have a chance. It's usually low turnout and huge sums of money. Nearly, I think, $50 million was sent on this, on spent on this single race. So it's not necessarily a trend, but it's certainly got everybody's attention. Yeah, I think some people in uh, in Victoria around Dunkley are going to be talking about these sort of special elections over the next few weeks. But I want to move over to this Russia issue here, which I thought was absolutely fascinating here. A top U.S. official has warned of a serious national security threat around a potential nuclear cap capability in space that would violate the Outer Space Treaty and potentially be destabilizing. But I found the politics of this fascinating because I remember back in 2021 when Biden's top spokesperson Person mocked the idea of a space force. They asked whether the president has made a decision on keeping or keeping the scope of space force. Wow, space force. It's, it's the plane of today. Um, oh, it is an interesting question. Um, I am happy to check with our space force point of contact. I'm not sure who that is. I will find out and see if we have any update on that. I mean, I thought that was very, very glib, given what's happened now a couple of years later. But what's your take? And how much of this is politics? And how much of this is stuff that we should really be concerned about some new Russian capability, do you think, Mick? Yeah, James, I'll give you some inside information because I'm here in Washington. I've been talking to people on the Hill the last 24 hours since this story broke. There's a lot more politics on both sides of the aisle here than people realize. People are telling me this has more to do with the politics of the foreign aid bill, money for Ukraine and for Israel, and for the FISA bill, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, um, and that this was sort of promoted by a Republican pro-FISA, pro-Ukraine member to try and drive a discussion in favor of funding for Ukraine and for extending our Foreign uh, Intelligence uh, Act and so forth. So there's a lot of politics here on both sides now. By the way, in the last hour or so, the White House has confirmed that this does deal with uh, uh, nuclear capabilities of the Russians in outer space. It's a very serious deal, but we had a member, I talked to a member of the uh, uh, the uh, House Republican Intelligence Committee 
um, yesterday, and he said he saw the exact same materials. It's important, but it's not immediately pressing. He said this is not a clear and present risk. So um, I think your gut feeling is probably right. This has more to do right now with politics than real capabilities. Yeah, that's, I guess, on some level a little bit reassuring. But let's move back to domestic uh, politics here. Uh, and South Carolina, where Tim Scott has joined Donald Trump, Trump, Trump on stage amid rumors that he could possibly be a Trump running mate. Now, they were campaigning in South Carolina ahead of the GOP primary there next week. What do you reckon? Is he a shot for Veep? You know, you know Tim Scott well. Uh, I know Tim very well. Again, I'm from South Carolina. I know Nikki Haley very well. Um, by the way, Nikki Haley is losing her home state right now to Donald Trump by more than 30 points with about 10 days left. Early voting has actually started now in South Carolina. Tim Scott, originally, I did not have him on my list to be potential vice president. But keep in mind, he had the perfect excuse not to endorse Donald Trump until after South Carolina. Nikki Haley literally gave him a Senate seat about 10 years ago, and he affirmatively chose to endorse Donald Trump before the South Carolina primary. To me, that's a giant sort of flair that says he wants to be the vice president. So I've now added him to my list. My list is um, Elise Stefanik, a, a white female member of Congress, Christy Nome, a white female governor of South Dakota, Ben Carson, a um, black American former member of the cabinet, and Tim Scott, a black American senator. So that's my list of four potentials right now. Tim Scott was not on that list just two weeks ago. Big news there out of South Carolina. Mick Mulvaney, thank you so much, as always, for your time.